Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to go over update 4.3.1 and update 4.3.2. Now, both of these updates were pretty small, so that's why I decided to merge them into one single video. And even then, it'll probably still be a pretty short video. So first thing is the vehicle menu. The sorting on this has been improved. If you remember correctly, before, you would have all the vehicles except for, like, the D-Series, the Roamer, and the T-Series, and the H-Series. Then you'd have the props. Then you'd have the D-Series, Roamer, T-Series, and H-Series at the very bottom of the list. And it made no sense because you'd go cars, props, cars. So now it goes all the cars, then the props, and that's it. There's no cars at the bottom of the list now, which is much better for me because it's just, it makes sense to have all the cars together and then all the props together. And if the mod uses the correct sorting, it'll sort itself automatically in the correct area, it appears. For example, we have these vehicles there that they are sorted properly but the propane tank which is an older mod where it doesn't have all those fancy features it just thinks it's a vehicle so it goes there but if i wanted to i could just add the information to the game that says hey this is a prop and then it would sort itself down below i'm pretty sure so anyways let's go ahead and go through the actual vehicles first one we're going to take a look at is the barstow and i'm going to grab the 423 version because there's some changes to that one in particular now every version of the barstow had some improvements to the way it deforms the way the glass breaks and the rigidity unfortunately improvements to the way the car crashes basically are really difficult to, sh to show off unless it's like a major flaw was fixed because if it's slightly better it's it's almost impossible to show it because you have to duplicate the same crash twice and even if you just hold the throttle down and go straight out a wall it'll usually look slightly different in the same version of the game so trying to do two different versions of the game and compare them is just it's a crapshoot it might work it might not work it's to show off the difference so for that you just like you just gotta take the uh, developers word on that and you know I have no reason to doubt them that it's been improved and if you really wanted to you could of course pull up the J-beam structures and say oh yeah it has been improved but I trust them enough where I don't feel like I need to do that they've never been deceptive or anything like that they're real trustworthy seeming people so there's no need but we can crash it just for the heck of it you know it's like we can crash it anyways see it's better right totally better uh-huh uh, anyways, though, the reason I picked the 423 engine in particular, though, is because there is a new supercharger available to it. And apparently, I didn't notice this, but apparently there was only a stage 2 supercharger for the 423, which is the supercharger used in the drag version. Now we have a stage 1 supercharger, which looks kind of funky if you use this hood because it kind of just pops through the hood. So we can go ahead and change the hood off. Well, it's not the supercharger part, but popping through the hood. But the uh, point is, it looks funky with it sticking out the hood, so we can either use the Cal induction hood, which hides it perfectly, and you can see it right in there. You can actually see the supercharger now, not just the, the uh, carburetor. Or, if you wanted to, you could use the cut hood, which is the same one used on the drag one. But this is like a little bit overkill. You don't need to cut your hood for that tiny thing. You can get the cowl induction hood. But that wasn't there, and I totally forgot that it wasn't there. Also, all of the engines, their torque curves have been improved to be a lot more realistic uh, compared to the old version. Well, maybe not a lot more, but they are more realistic to their... Uh, real kind of counterparts of the car like if it was a real engine in that time period and stuff it's more what it should be and um, another thing is in the drag version the shifter now works so if I wanted to show you that I could actually just change the transmission on this one so we could have the four speed automatic drag transmission and in the other old version I never noticed it but I went back to the uh, the old version and it's like yep that's true the uh, transmission didn't move in the drag transmission now you can see it does it's kind of hard because I'm bouncing the car so hard but there you go transmission moves and it's funny the drag transmission really feels so much nicer than the other four speed when I drive them side by side like I want the drag transmission in all of them I think it's just the way I drive the cars it matches up better with me because I can control it in the corners and drift it and stuff and whoops I can also flip it which wasn't the goal but hey I'll take a free flip uh, and that's all the changes to the bar still so let's go ahead and move on to the next one which is the 200 BX for the 200 BX there was a small change to the suspension so it oversteers less and the GT wing which is the wing on this version is stronger which are again things that are almost impossible to demonstrate so let's not even try so we'll move on to the next vehicle which is the Grand Marshal and as far as I can remember that thing's only had a change where it has some more wheel options available to you that's it uh, for the Covet we actually have a few things changed one of them is the new version the beater which is kind of based on the 1.5 DX because it has the same engine as that but it has the colored bumpers like the LXI so it's just a kind of a car with a story like maybe the guy who owns this he drove it crashed it and just the easiest bumpers he could find happened to be the ones that were colored the same as the car I don't know 
Or maybe they're the same bumpers, but he colored them himself. Who knows? Now, one thing that this car does have that's a unique part is the struts. The struts are blown struts. So that means the car handles really sloppy and it's really bouncy. So if we go over this this hole in the road, you notice that the suspension doesn't just hit the hole in the road. It hits the hole in the road, and then you're still feeling the hole in the road afterwards because it just bounces all up and down. That is because this thing has such terrible struts. And that's by design because that's something you could totally have happen in a real car, you know? Struts just wear out over time and they become totally awful like this one's. And you're just like, you know, it's my beater. I don't care if the struts are awful. I'm going to drive it like this anyways. And that's exactly what this car is like. And when you drive it, you can totally feel that the stretch is just ruined. Like, it just it feels off because it bounces so much. There's so much body roll. And I think it even sits a little bit lower than the stock one because the struts are so ruined. And honestly, I really like having this as an option. It's just cool to have a car that's in a state of, like, not pristine condition. Like, the other cars, they all start pristine. This one starts really beat up and it starts in a way that you really can't do that you can't normally blow out the struts as far as i know with a uh, vehicle you usually end up damaging other parts of the suspension much more severely where blown struts would be the least of your worries you also notice that this one brings back the single mirror mode of the vehicle where the other ones once again have the dual mirror setup and i think uh that's about all the changes on it of course you do see the dirt on it that's pretty obvious right you see the dirt and I can show you what it looks like with different colors and it looks best in white different colors sometimes it looks a little strange so like if we uh, pull out a green car so like green car looks like green car looks okay if you reek it really bright you can barely see the dirt but if you make it chrome it's strange because the dirt goes away because it's based on the uh, like how the chrominess of the car is like there's a better terminology for that but the game itself is using chrominess so we'll use chrominess and we can put it like to this color and I really like when you have like a um, a gray with the dirt like that looks really good to me like that's my favorite color with it and then of course you could also get it with a black with the dirt can't even see the dirt too much there if only it was like that in real life if you get a black car in real life it just looks white with dirt I know my car looks filthy and it's black it always looks filthy Looks like that, but it doesn't look so clean even with the dirt. Um, but yeah, that about covers uh, this version of the car, so let's just uh, say hello, Cliff with the Pepto Bismol. That was actually a nice roll I got on that thing. It rolled good and aimed to the water. And now it is dead. So now we can go ahead and take a look at a Covet version that you've seen before. It is the Turbo Rally one, but now it has a new paint job, which has the Ibishu Racing Team on the back. And it looks really great in white, but this one. You don't exactly want to change the color too much because white looks awesome. But if you get a color like yellow, it starts to look kind of funky. Like it gets green. It's like green and yellow is kind of a strange combination. If you get green, it just looks all green. Blue kind of looks pretty cool because you got like two tones. Dark blue, it just blends everything together. It makes it hard to see unless you have it like a real bright blue. Like, kind of, like you could, it's kind of weird sometimes the way the layers blend together. You know, you have to pick certain colors that work out. Like white looks great. Black totally makes it disappear. Gray looks okay. Light blue I like a lot because it's just that two-tone. I think red looks okay. Kind of makes it look blackish. But you can mess around with this, see all the different colors and combinations you can get. Find the ones that work. But honestly, the white the white looks good. I like that design a lot. It looks like a legit rally car. As for performance, though, it's mostly unchanged. All versions of the Covet did have some changes, though. The half shaft has been strengthened further because I believe they were strengthened before in a previous update if I remember correctly. So it's even stronger and um, but there's new hubcap options available but I never changed the wheels so I don't know which hubcaps are new but there are new ones. Again, I don't know which. Anyways, let's crash this thing. Oh, that was a beautiful flip! Like that was a perfect flip! I love that flip. And of course Roll Cage does its job so even though we flipped, the drivers are pretty much unharmed in this thing probably because it was not a real strong forceful impact it was just some rolling which is a good crash for a race car driver like when you crash in a race car you always want it to flip and roll and decelerate slowly like that you never want it to stop instantly because that's what hurts you anyways moving on moving on to the next car which is the pessima the only thing changed in that was a small fix to some of the wheels being unstable so we're going to pretty much ignore that and go to the moonhawk which has quite a few changes to it First up is the i6 automatic version, which was not present in the game before. There is both a 1973 to 1975 version and a 1976 to 1978 version. I'm going to go with the newer one and we'll drive it around just a little bit so you can kind of see how it performs. 
Also, the three speed on the I6 has been improved as well, and I6, of course, stands for inline six engine. Uh, that's what the I6 stands for, if you didn't know that. And then for crashing, the glass breaking physics have been improved on this car so it breaks more realistically, which we can test right now. Does that look more realistic? Sure it does. I don't know. I don't know what it was like before where I would have a complaint. It always seemed pretty decent to me before, but improvements are always good. Uh, the front dampers have also been improved. And there was some new paint jobs that I gotta show you after we take this thing out. It still wants to drive. I kind of want to let it drive, but I don't really have control over it because it's so busted. It just kind of goes in whichever way it wants. Like, I'm kind of suggesting it goes left, but it's like, yeah, I don't want to go left. I'm going to go straight. And yeah, that's going left even though I'm not telling it to. Yeah, that's enough of that. So let's take a look at the paint jobs. All you do is just go over here to the part selector and you pick paint design and you have a bunch of different things. So you have the stripes inverted, which means whatever color you choose will be stripes on a black car. So you can see what it looks like with a bunch of different colors. Although you can't just have it on chrome mode. Actually, chrome mode might look kind of cool. Yeah, actually, it actually works pretty good when you have it pretty chromed out like that. It, it works well. You can see you can change the stripe color. You cannot change the color of the car, though, except for chrominess. So you can make it, like, really chromey, which almost makes it look silver. I mean, I guess chrome is silver, right? Duh. Um, but, yeah, you could do that. Then we have the pinstripe inverted, which is the same idea, but... It's a pinstripe design, which you can't see at all because of how chrome this is. So we'll make it a little darker. And then we'll choose a better color. There we go. You can see the pinstripe. And again, you can use a bunch of different colors. Ooh, that green actually looked kind of cool. Like that. I like that. Like, it's it's not good, but I like it. You know, like, speaking from an arts perspective or whatever, and it's like bad, but I like it. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, next up is the special inverted. And this one has like a trim on the bottom and stuff this one though when you change the color of the car it actually affects the whole car so you can see that and how it reacts so if you have a really bright color here it makes that trim really bright but then the car the color the color of the car doesn't change when you have it like that huh didn't know that but you can mess around with all the colors trying to figure out what you want on it lots of combinations here some of them look better than others like blue like that, I think that looks pretty good. You know, something like that. Decent. And then purple, is like, that's just strange. I mean, it's a purple car, so that's strange in itself, but then it's stranger. Then you have the regular special, which is just you have color details. So, like, no matter what color you pick here, the car color, or the uh, detail will be black, but you could have it on any car color. I think those ones are the more practical ones, unless you actually want a mostly black car. And then we also have the pinstripe one and the regular stripe and I might as well show them I was thinking about did not but it's like oh, whatever we could do it so you see you have black stripes on the car I hate how it changes the brightness every time you change the color like that it's not like I can't just go whoop whoop here are the colors alright next one I have to change the brightness and all that oh well pinstripes last one the black pinstripes so then I say this color nope we're going all the way you know fix that and pinstripe colors pinstripe actually looks nice on this car I like that pinstripe like the way it follows that body line right there is really good looking hood one uh i could do without the hood one i like the side one mostly side one looks good hood's just okay anyways that covers the moonhawk so now we can move on to the next one which is the pigeon only difference here is the pigeon used to be able to drive underwater with the 600 cc engine now it can't next up is the sbr4 and i don't believe there are any changes to the oh wait no 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 there was improved glass breaking and the wing has more downforce my bad I forgot about those next up is the sunburst it has a slightly different shifter points the wing on the RS is stronger and the police one has a new skin there that's it I'm like wait a minute I know it's here this is the new police skin it's like a French police skin so you can take a look at the way that looks gendarmerie I know how to say French police or something like that like, I have no idea what a French police car looks like, but I have to assume it looks like one. I, it's one of those things where I didn't bother to look it up, but it'd be really strange if it didn't look kind of like what you would expect for a French police car, you know? It's like, I kind of just assume the developers, you know, actually looked at what a French police car looked like. And of course, drives just like the other one, pretty much, in terms of uh, drivability. I do like how you can see the light, though. I'm trying to go to the trees to show you, and I just wrecked it, but 
Oh, is the light gone now? Can you see the light anymore? Oh, that's strange. When the car is broken, you can't see the light as much. Like, when the car is good, and you go to a kind of darkish area, you can actually see the light doing things. Like, right there, you can see it. But when I broke the car, the light, you couldn't see it no more. Huh. Anyways, that is for the sunburst. Next up is the bull eyed, which had uh, a new spoiler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. It has a new configuration. The 390 GTR, which has a new spoiler in the Italian-style paint job, I guess you could call it. I'm assuming the new spoiler gives it more downforce, so it's better at high speeds. Although I can't get up to real high speeds here because it's kind of a tight course, but... I have to assume it works! Oh, goodness! I can't believe that worked. Like, I bounced right off of a wall, it looked like, almost, to not crash there. That was amazing. Well, let's crash it. After all that amazing not crashing. Ooh, nice flip! That was actually a really good flip. Hey, I got the spoiler off. That's what I was trying to do that whole time. There's that more of a wing. That's more of a wing than a spoiler, isn't it? Oh, well. Yeah, I have a bad habit of writing one thing and then I look at it like, wait, I wrote the wrong thing down when I was writing things down. That's more of a spoiler. I mean, that's not a spoiler. That's more of a wing. Oh, well. Anyways, next vehicle. We're getting through them slowly, but surely. Uh, D-Series and the Roamer. As far as I can remember, D-Series was just kind of bug fixes. Roamer has a new version. It's the Fire Chief version. So you can run around saying, I'm a fireman. You get the light bar on top, which I don't think actually gives off light like the uh, police one we were looking. I think it just uh, has a light that you can see on the vehicle. Yeah, it doesn't appear to give off any light. Then it has regular headlights, but that doesn't change the top. But it drives just like any other uh, Roamer. Nothing too special about it. And then the oops, ah, oh, I thought I could go through there for a second. That would have been cool. I wasn't looking at the screen at all. Can you tell? Ah, uh, but the next thing is that this one has been renamed from uh, police to sheriff or highway patrol to sheriff. Anyways, next up is the not the school bus. That's a mod. The T series, which has a new transmission. It has one less gear, and it weighs a little bit less. But the plow weighs more. So let's see if we get this thing up to top gear. If not, I could just use a manual transmission, but... I want to see if I can do it with automatic. But I think the whole gearbox has been reworked. It's not like they just removed a gear. It's a whole brand new gearbox to be more realistic, basically. I can't get it up to top gear. But trust me, it has 12 gears instead of 13. 12th gear is probably more of a cruising gear like not when you're trying to go full throttle acceleration usually I can't make this corner no way no how no way no how no way no how okay there goes my door oh weird it kind of like fluttered like a leaf or something the way it was falling off that was that was weird looking I've also shredded a tire that's not good for drivability this is so weird the truck itself looks so undamaged from somehow getting that tire and stuff like except for the door falling off and the exhaust getting damaged the rest of the truck looks flawless that is funny I don't know how I managed that one alright last up for the vehicles is the H series we got a new version it's the police version so we can take a look at that it's got a little Police with the BBG Drive logo. Dial 911. That's, don't dial 911. Don't do it. Like, just don't dial 911. Unless you need to dial 911. Then dial 911. Just don't usually, though. And it says Strike Force on it. Interior, though, is the same. So I'm not sure what's so police about it. Like, you can put criminal in the back. They'll just stab you in the neck while you're trying to drive. You don't want that? No, you don't. Now we could go crash. Oh, yes. Upright. We can go crash again then. I'm gonna go crash into, I don't know, whatever the heck is over here. I think we have a little cliff we could fall off of. Or bounce off of, whatever. Same, same idea. Now we're a tree. Great. Awesome. That covers all the vehicles though, then some of the other changes is the maps, so there was a lot of small improvements and tweaks to pretty much every map. Small things that you probably wouldn't notice unless you did a side-by-side -side comparison, but 
it's good stuff to have because it makes them run better, I think, uh, for optimization-wise and look better overall. But nothing where it's, like, really easy to point it out. There's a new slow-mo mode that you wouldn't normally get. So now instead of going from 8 times slow-mo to 100 times, we have a 16 times slow-mo. Haven't uh, played with it much, but it seems like it might be uh, a usable function for me because there are times where 8's too slow and or 8's too fast and 100's too slow, so 16 is probably like a good split there. So that might be nice to have. And then force feedback has been improved if you use something that has force feedback. And that's pretty much uh, everything that those two updates had. Of course, if you want a full change log, go ahead and check those out on the forums. I uh, will try to put a link in the description, but if I forget, you can probably find it just by googling Demon G Drive Update 4.3.1 Change Log. Anyways, I think um, that'll do it, so till next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya. Summary thumbnail!